Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Amaro, and I'm the Athletic Director at Freedom High School in Oakley. Three years ago, we began a journey to go ahead and bring Special Olympics Unified Sports to our high school. Special Olympics Unified Sports is different from Special Olympics. Special Olympics are one-day events that take place throughout our state that bring our students with physical and intellectual disabilities together so they can compete and learn the benefits of physical activity. Special Olympics Unified Sports has those same goals. However, they also carry the goal of unifying schools. Particularly, Special Olympics Unified Sports has our physical and intellectual dis disabled students participate with mainstream students in seasons. So they participate in practices and then in a, entire seasons with other schools that have unified sports. Special Olympics Unified Sports brings our students that have intellectual and physical di disabilities together with our mainstream students. What this does is allow our students to go ahead and create bonds with each other and allow all of the students on our campus to learn how to, cre how to create a more inclusive environment. Once you've decided to begin a Special Olympics program, there are basic steps that you want to take. First and foremost, you want to make sure you start small. Start with something that you believe that you can go ahead and accomplish. One way to do this is to go ahead and approach your student athletes and find out what they're interested in. Another way to do this is to go and talk to your Special Olympics students and find out what sports they're interested in. For instance, at Freedom High School, I went to our classes that had students that were intellectually and physically disabled and asked them what sport they were most interested in, and that's how we began basketball. After that, we evolved to go ahead and include a unified bowling program, and this year we added unified soccer. In starting a unified sports program, one of the considerations that you need to take is what do you have in terms of facilities. Facilities on high school campuses are usually at a premium, so you have to decide what facilities are available and what time you want to run your Special Olympics program. One of the challenges that we faced at Freedom High School was finding facilities available and what season we were going to select for our unified sports program. As our students were most interested in running a unified basketball program, we knew that we couldn't run this during the fall season where we had volleyball going on, nor were we going to be able to run it concurrently with our basketball seasons that take place in the winter. What we did find out was that the weather is relatively nice in the spring and we could go ahead and conduct practices outside. And when our volleyball team was away, we were able to host unified sports basketball games within our gymnasium. As you gain support from your program, it's very important to keep everybody involved. Make sure that your administrators know that you're interested in this program. Make sure that your teachers know that you're interested in this program. Make sure that you reach out to your special education department so they are able to help you with the resources that are available. And probably one of the most important factors is don't hesitate to contact your local Special Olympics office and the CIF if necessary to go ahead and get some resources to start your program. It is also important to discuss your unified sports program at your local league meetings because ultimately this can't be a one school venture. You're going to have to get two, three, and possibly even four schools involved. There are three models to unified sports, the recreational model, the player development model, and the competitive model. The recreational model is really an entry level unified sports program that can take place during the school day. They are practices which basically expose not only your general education students, but also your physically and disabled students to competing on teams together in sports that may not be sanctioned by the CIF, such as kickball. The player development model is where you take your mainstream student population and your physically and intellectually disabled students and put them together on teams where they go through competitive practices, learn to become better, and also compete against other schools inside your local area. This model encourages those students that are mainstream students to serve as mentors, to learn how to work with our special education population, and also to find out what it's like to participate in a game. The competitive model of unified sports involves students that have physical and intellectual disabilities, along with your mainstream population, competing for spots on the same team and basically have the same level of skill. For instance, at Freedom High School we have a unified bowling program which some of our unified sports athletes, our physically and intellectually disabled students, are even more competitive and better than some of our regular student population. Another point of emphasis needs to be safety. 
once you are doing these activities, you need to make sure that you have supervised coaches that are able to go ahead and make sure that the environment is safe. Make sure that the students understand what are safe practices and also do a little bit of mediation to where you have your special education department work with your general education students so they're familiar with best practices on how to create safe practices in games. At Freedom High School, we have two levels of unified sports that we offer. Two of them are player development models in our unified soccer and our unified basketball program. One of them is our competitive model, which is our unified bowling program. In the player development model, we have our students that serve, our mainstream student, students serve as role models and competitive teammates that are there to go ahead and support our intellectual and physically disabled students to succeed. In our competitive model, we have our mainstream athletes competing for spots on the team with those that are physically and intellectually disabled. And in some cases, our physically and intellectually disabled population are even better skilled than those of our mainstream students. Bringing unified sports to your campus can have a transformative effect on the entire campus. Personally, I was able to see Freedom High School change to become a in more inclusive environment. What has been even more surprising to me is as our district and the entire league has joined in in unified sports, I've heard the exact same accounts from other schools within our area. It's not only beneficial for those parents of our unified sports population, but I see some of our spectators that come to the game that say, I can't believe that you're running this program. This is the best thing that's ever occurred in high school athletics. Whether this is true or not is something that you get to experiment with. What I can tell you is that it has been a great ride and I look forward to seeing more of you join us in bringing unified sports to your school.